I'm going to use this model to illustrate the difference between taking pictures with x-rays and what we do in nuclear medicine, which is to take pictures with a gamma camera. For the purposes of this illustration, uh, my patient is this box with some internal organs inside that we want to have a look at. Most people are familiar with how we take pictures with x-rays. We use an x-ray source uh, to shine through the patient and cast shadows of dense objects inside. And for the purposes of this illustration, my x-rays are replaced with a light source from this light projector here. And if we shine that through our patient, we see that we get some shadows on this screen here representing the film. And we can see that this patient has got three opaque objects inside them. In fact, they're light bulbs for this demonstration. And we can clearly see the size and shape of each of the light bulbs there. But one limitation of this image is that although the patient is actually a three-dimensional object, this image is only a two-dimensional image. In fact, we call it a projection uh, because it's a projection of the three-dimensional object onto this two-dimensional image. But we can get some information about three-dimensional distribution if we rotate the source. In the real, um, real uh, X-ray study, we rotate the X-ray source around the patient uh, in a process of computed tomography, CT. For this illustration, I can do the same thing by rotating the object inside the patient. If I rotate we can see that they move in different directions and we can get an idea of which one is close to the film and which one is far away by which direction they rotate. So in our mind, we can build up a three-dimensional picture of where these light bulbs are. In the real study, the computer builds up that three-dimensional image in a process called CT, computed tomography. The computer generates a tomographic or a three-dimensional image from all these two-dimensional images. So that's how we can get two-dimensional or three-dimensional images with X-ray. How do we do the same thing in nuclear medicine? Well, what we have to do with nuclear medicine is, first of all, we inject the patient with a small amount of what we call a radiopharmaceutical. That's got two parts to it. Um, it's got a chemical bit which concentrates in the organs that we're interested in, attached to a radioactive label that gives out gamma rays, which are very similar to X-rays and which we can detect from outside the patient. So to illustrate that, if I turn off the X-ray source, and instead activate the radio pharmaceutical by turning on the light bulbs, we get, um, well, it's hardly an image, it's rather disappointing. We can see radiation coming out, but we can't see where it's coming from. The problem here is that the X-rays use a well-defined beam of X-rays, which cast nice crisp shadows of the objects inside the patient. But here, our gamma rays are coming out in all directions, and we don't get an image at all. In order to produce an image, we have to confine the gamma rays to only the direction that we want. And we do that by use of a collimator. This collimator is in fact made of lots of drinking straws all stuck together so that light can only get through it in a particular direction. And if we put that in front of our screen here, we see that now we do get some sort of image. It's very much dimmer we have less radiation coming through because we blocked most of them with the, the drinking straws, but we do get an image that shows us the light bulbs, albeit a rather blurred one. The um, resolution is not nearly as good as it was with the X-ray source. However, we seem to have only two light bulbs instead of the three that we saw before, um, and that demonstrates that the radio pharmaceutical has only gone to two of these light bulbs. In other words, only two of the light bulbs are working. So we're getting a rather different sort of information from this image with the gamma camera. We still only have a two-dimensional image. It's still only a projection, or, albeit now we've got it from a, an emission image, the gamma ray coming out of the patient, whereas the X-ray was a transmission image with the X-rays transmitted through the patient. But we can do the same sort of thing to get some three-dimensional information if we rotate 
Um, we can see that the sources do seem to move around, and we can get that same sort of three-dimensional information. And again, uh, in our mind's eye, we could build up a picture of which one's close and which one's further away. And again, the computer can do the same thing, and we call that SPET, which stands for Single Photon Emission Computed Tomography, exactly analogous to the X-ray computed tomography that we did with, with X-rays. So you can see we can get a, an image here of the function, in other words, which light bulbs are working from the radio pharmaceutical and the gamma camera in nuclear medicine, whereas the X-ray image um, gave us some information about the shape and size of the organs um, from the uh, transmission image with the, the showing the shadows of the light bulbs. In fact, we can do even better than that by combining the two techniques. So if I remove the comment for a moment, uh, turn off the radio pharmaceutical uh, and turn on the x-rays, then we have this uh, x-ray CT image and we can record the position of the shadows by putting a, a film over that and drawing on it the outline of the individual uh, light bulbs there. So that has recorded the CT image. And if we now go back to the SPECT image, we can now see the outline of the CT image, shown by the black lines, and superimposed on that, we have the camera SPECT image showing which bits are functioning. So we get the best of both worlds. We have the anatomical information from the CT and the functional information from the SPECT. That is so-called hybrid SPECT-CT, getting the two modalities combined into one image. 